Okay, uh, good morning. Welcome to the course on keys to supernatural ministry. We will pray and begin. And I would like to request uh, one of us to please lead in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you under the name of Jesus. We thank you for this beautiful day and for the class we are about to have. God, we are so thankful that you took the cross for us and you have given all this authority and you have given us the power to flow in the supernatural because of your son, Jesus Christ. God, as we are studying about this, uh, all the keys to do the supernatural ministry, God, you open our mind and heart and help us to accept the truth and uh, help us to not just uh, read the word, but to flow in the supernatural as we do ministry for you, Jesus. I bless each one of my classmates in the name of Jesus. Give us the good uh, Wi-Fi connection throughout the class and whatever we are learning, God, help us to apply it in our life and help us to be a blessing to others. You have called us, Jesus, as we are preparing. Give us the knowledge and understanding that we need so that we will understand whatever pastor is teaching us. Be with us and guide us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Jafina. In the last class, we looked at uh, key five, which is the anointing of God. Uh, and we saw how one needs to understand you know, the way the anointing works and uh, the way we can flow in the anointing. So anointing is nothing but um, the expression of God's power, which is released through a person so you know, we began uh, by saying that the holy spirit indwells every believer and the holy spirit also clothes or empowers believers who are baptized in the holy spirit and through that believer you know the power of god is released in various ways connected to the grace and the gifting of god in that person's life um, and you know there is there is all the wonderful you know supernatural things that take place so when we begin to understand it that yes there is an empowering uh, of uh, a god on us we will be able to uh, see how best each of us can release the anointing okay so there are different aspects that we covered under that uh, uh, and we said that grace of god gifting of god so recognizing it is very helpful because uh when we recognize it we can devote ourselves you know, to to that particular uh grace and gifting and we will see that the power of god uh begins to flow through us better okay there are of course exceptions uh but in general god would uh, show his power through those gifts Know, in our lives we also said that when we spend time in the word of god the anointing or the release of that power of god upon our lives can actually increase and you know the more you you meditate uh, with respect to the areas where you want the anointing to be seen. For example, we said prophetic. So if I want to grow or flow in a greater prophetic anointing, meditating on scriptures related to the prophetic you know, will, will uh, make a huge difference. Similarly, healing. If I want to see a great release of the healing anointing through my life, meditating on healing scriptures will cause that to happen. So engaging with the scriptures, uh, uh, will will cause us to release that particular anointing okay now we also mentioned about consecration consecration is where we we said that anointing is an expression through an individual uh, so that individual or you know we can call that person as a vessel if that vessel has completely surrendered themselves to god uh, then God can flow in a stronger way through that person. But if the vessel uh, has, you know, 
contamination or still carry sin it becomes very hard for the power of god or the anointing of god to flow effectively uh, and powerfully through the individual soul as vessels we must uh, dedicate ourselves to god we must also get rid of sin which helps us to be a ready vessel for the master's use and then of course we mention the importance of expectation so that's the reason the word of god is taught to the people and uh, uh, an atmosphere is set you know for the people to expect from god you know, when you introduce god as a healer through all the verses in, in god's word based on that word people will be able to believe that god he that god will um, release healing to them okay so there is an expectation okay so uh, as you know people of god who want to see a flow of the anointing we can use the benefit of expectation set the expectation you know through the word through worship uh, through encouragement through testimonies you know, we can do that but one thing that we must be cautious about as far as expectation is concerned is we must not create a hype because sometimes you know that has happened uh, in christian circles where people have created so much of a hype it could be about you know some unusual manifestation of let's say uh, uh the anointing flowing through uh, cloth okay but the hype that has been created makes a cloth look you know like the supernatural thing whereas it's not it's just a conduit it's just a medium through which you know god might release his healing anointing over people that they might get healed so expectation is good cause people to have an expectation but minus the hype okay get rid of the hype uh, and uh, do that he also talked about the measures of anointing where uh, one can carry a greater extent of anointing uh, and from you know uh, the impartation through through that anointing another person can actually carry a completely different measure of the anointing the examples we saw elijah elisha moses and the 70 leaders who who served under him so there was a completely different uh, a uh, type of anointing you could say uh, or part uh, of the anointing and the level of anointing as well so we also said that there are different kinds of anointings as a healing anointing prophetic anointing teaching anointing so one must recognize what is it that the holy spirit is releasing and you start to flow with that anointing and you would see the power of god made manifest okay uh, in those situations so recognizing okay what is the holy spirit doing now how is the anointing flowing is very very important then growing in the anointing so when we embrace that gift we begin to uh, equip ourselves in that gift and we start to allow the holy spirit to flow through that gift you know we will also see that there is an increase of that anointing more and more the more you uh, keep moving with with god in that one area the anointing is you know getting better and stronger and more powerful blessing more people uh, destroying yokes uh, so that will be our experience as we see the growth of the anointing over our lives and impartation is another subject the reason i'm doing a recap is i know the last two classes we had a little bit of a disturbance with the connectivity and all that so i really don't want us to miss out on the key learnings okay that we need to move in the supernatural so impartation when we talked about impartation basically we said that impartation happens in line with or aligned with the grace of god over our lives so i can receive an impartation let's say uh, from a leader teacher pastor uh, individual but if i am just called to be a teacher of the word and not necessarily a pastor the impartation that i will receive will be align to the teaching of god's word and not necessarily you know the other uh, anointings that that person uh, from whom i am receiving the impartation 
carries. So it will be aligned to the grace of God over my life. And impartation is possible through association. Again, impartation is only a measure of the anointing. So I cannot expect the entire anointing that rests and flows through an individual to come upon me because it doesn't work like that. Okay, but a part or a measure of the anointing that someone carries, I may receive it aligned to the grace of God over my life. And uh, we also uh, made it very clear that impartation is not something that human beings give each other, but impartation comes from the Lord. So we must seek anointing from the Lord and he will pour out you know, his anointing and it will flow through us. Uh, and even if an impartation is received, uh, one needs to nurture it now. The person, let's say, who's flowing in an incredible teaching anointing, we look and we are, you know, thrilled by their testimony, their example. And you know, we say, wow, you know, if only I had that gift uh, or that anointing, uh, I too can be just like that person. But you know what? That person uh, may have surrendered their lives over and over unto the Lord. That person is walking in obedience. They have nurtured the gift. Okay, so if it is a teaching gift, you know, we don't know how many hours, uh, man hours of work they have put in to study. Uh, in, uh, they have, uh, you know, prayed to receive understanding from God so that there is a clarity in what they are uh, sharing with the people. So, you know, there's a lot of work basically that has gone in and they have nurtured the gift. They have developed the gift over their life. So I cannot expect that I will have like a hundred percent transfer or an impartation of that, that form uh, of the gift over my life. Maybe God releases to me a part or a measure of that anointing, but then I have a responsibility. I have a role. I have to now develop that anointing which God has given me, or I have to now nurture, work with, work hard uh, on the uh, impartation that I have received. You know? So uh, wisdom, I'll have to use wisdom. If I have leadership, I'll have to now uh, be a good steward of this impartation. Okay, I have a leadership anointing which has been imparted to me. Now, how do I carry it forward with wisdom? You know, I have to equip myself. I need to find counsel. I need to study God's word, wait upon him in his presence. So all those skin things come into play. So when we talk about impartation, it is not devoid of our responsibility. Yes, God will give, but that we also have to work out you know, what God has uh, entrusted to us. So all these things come into the picture. So how can we release the anointing? That was the next thing that we talked about. We said you know, there are many ways that the release of God's power through an individual can take place. So it can be through the spoken word. I might say, you know, I command in the name of Jesus or I speak that scripture or, you know, uh, something, the words that I release by by faith and authority, you know, that will release the anointing over people's lives. You know, I might just say, be healed, and that moment they are healed. Or I might release a word of knowledge, they are healed. So there has to be a way of releasing the anointing. And it can be many different ways. You know, Sometimes uh, just by laying hands. We, we saw that, isn't it, in the case of Mark 5, that the woman with the issue of bleeding touches the hem of Jesus' garment. So touch, touch is what happens there. What happens when there is touch from Jesus and his body flows out the power or the expression of God's power through the individual, which we are calling as the anointing, flows out, touches the woman and she is immediately healed or cleansed from the flow of blood. So touch can be one of the ways. You might sense that you just have to go and touch that person or you might sense that, oh, I have to anoint this person with oil or something like that. So whatever it is that you sense, you do it. Okay. Or, you know, faith, a uh, gift of uh, faith at that moment, you may want to do something 
that you uh, raise up that person, make the person sit, or give the person some water, something. Okay, through faith, you do an action, and that will release the anointing. What if we don't speak, don't touch, or don't do the action? The anointing will not flow. So that's the problem. So. To administer the anointing, we also have to be sensitive. Or maybe God might say, you sing this song. So you just sing a song and the anointing flows. So there is uh, an act or something that God may want us to do in order for the anointing to be released. And we must be obedient to that. And finally, hindrances to the flow of the anointing. We said, obviously, unbelief, that becomes a huge barrier. Anointing is flowing. Either the person ministering is carrying unbelief, not sufficient faith, or the people who are receiving, their faith is not built up. So remember, when Jesus could not do many miracles in places where people had unbelief in their hearts. So we have to deal with the unbelief. Once you deal with the unbelief, there is a greater flow of the anointing that unwilling to step out. So you see, as far as uh, actually not just supernatural, but in the Christian life, uh, taking risks is very, very important. You know? God might just say, hey, can you do this? It might be a risky thing for us to step out and say, yes, Lord, I will do it. But it's only when you are willing to take the risk that things will happen. So as far as anointing is concerned, God might say, hey, Word of knowledge. Speak it out. If we are standing there thinking, am I correct? Am I not correct? What will happen? What will people say? I've never said a word of knowledge. What happens? We are unwilling to take the risk. You know, if we release that word of knowledge, there is a chance that somebody may get healed or somebody will get blessed. But if we withhold it, you know, we might just you know, be careful about our reputation and be happy. So what do you want? Pick one. So taking a risk is very important when it comes to the release of the anointing. God will definitely, uh, you know, tell us different things to release it. You know, either lay hands or speak the word or uh, do this, do that. Unless we do it, we will not see a release of the anointing. So taking the risk uh, and, you know, uh, it, having the interference of the works of the flesh. So when we are uh, in our own world with our own desires, sinful desires, you're not cleansed. It will hinder the anointing. God wants to do mighty things, but, you know, the flow of the anointing will slowly stop. Okay. So that's a problem. So sinful lifestyle, sinful habits, these things have to be dealt with. Can the anointing flow for a while uh, while the person is still in their flesh? Uh, it can. It can to some extent, but eventually it will stop because God cannot anoint flesh. Right? We saw that scripture also, how uh, uh, we, we've seen that God did not want um, the oil to be poured out on, uh, you know, anything other than what was consecrated. So we've got to be careful about that. So we cannot be impure vessels, uh, vessels which are not surrendered to God. And then we expect, oh, God, you know, I want to minister powerfully. It's not going to happen. Okay. At least we see in scripture that God shows us that we must become a good channel. So whenever we think of anointing, a good uh, example okay, is to think of uh, a pipe. So if you had a pipe in your garden uh, and you connected it to a tap, you wanted to water the plants in the garden, you know, maybe the, the connection is all good and your pipe is all, uh, you know, proper. There are no holes, no leaks in it. So what happens? You open the tap, nice flow of water, you can water your plants. But what if there are things blocking inside the pipe? The flow will not be good enough. Or what if there are holes in the pipe? The flow will not be good enough. What if the pipe is not properly connected to the tap? The flow will not be good enough. So when you think about the anointing, I feel this analogy helps me. 
the expression of God's power through us. It's like that pipe. How well am I connected to God? Do I have things in my life like unbelief, which are blocking the flow of the anointing? The water itself, you could just you know analyze. I'm not saying Holy Spirit is water, but I'm just giving an analogy. So the flow of the Spirit should not be hindered by anything within me or leaks, right? Leaks or uh, something, you know, things that that cause the anointing to just uh, flow out instead of minister to people. So all these things have to be checked in order for us to become a great conduit of the flow of God's anointing. So very quickly, uh, any, any other questions, thoughts? Because it's important we understand these things. Otherwise, we will not be able to flow. And uh, so that's why I thought I have to do a, a recap on this subject. OK, any questions, quick questions, before we uh, switch to the next subject here? Are we OK, as far as anointing is concerned? Yes, I think we have done well, ma'am. OK. Excellent, excellent. So if we have a good base about the anointing, let's quickly move over to our next topic here, which is the presence, God's presence and his glory. Okay, so that is what we are going to talk about. All right. So uh, now it contrast <coughs> to the anointing. Anointing is God's expression through a person or somebody who is ministering. Okay. So the flow of God's power through that individual or set of individuals is what is known as the anointing. Now coming to the power of God. Okay, uh, and uh, this power of God, which is uh, not necessarily expressed through a person, but it is just present, or uh, uh, you know, it's God expressing Himself, God expressing Himself uh, to a set of people, which can be spiritually discerned. All right. So that is what we take as the presence of God. So God is there and we are able to spiritually perceive it. And that is what we are referring to as the presence of God. So obviously, uh, we do understand that we cannot see with our physical eyes if God is present, he's not present. But this is a matter which can be discerned spiritually. So we can sense, you know, sometimes we use terms like that, sense with our spirit that yes, God is there, God is present in our midst. So uh, this is how, you know, we, we recognize the presence of God. Uh, so usually, the recognition of God's presence happens through our spirit man. Okay, because God is spirit. And our spirit, you know, it's a spirit to spirit thing that we are able to sense. You know, we come out of some uh, some meetings or just a time of prayer and we say, hey, I felt the presence of God. What does it mean? Spiritually, we are discerning that God and you know, God was present and we sensed an expression of his presence in our midst. Okay. So it's primarily a spirit to spirit thing. But having said that, is it possible for us to sense the presence of God in our soul or our body? The answer is yes. The spirit can easily sense the presence of God at all times. But even our soul, so when I say soul, let's just say uh, our emotions, 
you know we feel joy you know we may have been in a great turmoil or distress and we go into a time of prayer when we come out of that time of prayer what happens we come out refreshed rejoicing and our emotions may have experienced the presence of god okay so i can feel peace i can feel joy and it's not just in my spirit senses but also in my natural uh, soulish senses so it is possible for us to sense the presence of god in the soulish realm and even in the physical realm so with the in the you know body we can say things like you know uh, the presence of god like you know there are expressions and we'll talk about it a little later uh, that i may have felt like a warmth okay uh, i may have felt a uh, uh, something cool just a few days ago i was praying for this individual and i just asked him how are you feeling how are you feeling because he was just not opening his eyes and i said how are you feeling brother what's happening so he just with a smile he said i just feel like a coolness come over me right a uh, coolness so i was trying to explain to him you know what it's the presence of god you're feeling the presence of god okay so uh, the presence of god is generally sensed by our spirit but it can also be sensed by our emotions and even our physical bodies and so you know we can respond when we sense the presence of god so the glory of god is god expressing himself to a person or a group you know or a community uh, on his own on his own in uh, in ways that can be recognized so presence we understood god is there he is present we get that what is glory glory is a powerful expression of the presence of god we would say in a visible way a tangible way do you remember the children of israel as moses was leading them you know, they had a cloud covering them they had the pillar of fire by night okay what are these the presence of god takes an expression that is noticeable that is you know or if if not uh, with the natural eye uh, it is noticeable or tangible you know in some other way you hear you hear a thunder or like basically the glory of god is a powerful expression of the presence of god and it's generally tangible or it can also be visible naturally right so people come up with uh, people have stated that you know i could see a cloud or i could i could see uh, i could see some uh, you know gold glitters or some uh, some gem or some feathers or so there are tangible expression suddenly suddenly how these things happen we don't have an answer but yes there are uh, testimonies and incidents where people have experienced or encountered the powerful expression of the presence of god and in tangible ways in visible ways in noticeable ways we usually use the word the glory the glory of god for that kind of a presence of god okay so here is what we have to understand why are we talking about presence of god glory of god uh, in supernatural class the reason why we are talking about this is you see as individuals and as a community we can host the presence of god in such a way that we host the glory of god okay how do we get there you know there are different ways that we can get there of faith word of god being sensitive to the anointing of god all that causes what it causes us to experience the presence in greater measures now we have to understand as far as the presence is concerned we say god is omnipresent so does uh, 
you know, an unbeliever experience the presence of God? Yes. An unbeliever also would say, yeah, God is present. I know God is there in this world. God is there next to me somewhere. So an unbeliever can say things like that. But is it the same presence that we are talking about? No, it's the, you might say, the most basic uh, understanding of the presence of God that an unbeliever can talk about because that's all they experience. But as a believer, for us, when two or three are gathered, there I am present in the midst of them. So what happens? Yes, God is omnipresent, but when we gather together, we are having a stronger and a greater sense of the presence of God. So what's happening? You know, you can you can look at it like you know, it's getting bigger and bigger. It's getting uh, bigger and better. You know, when when you engage in faith, when you engage in prayer. So the presence of God, which exists in its most basic way, in the omni presence of God, it becomes bigger and stronger when we come together in prayer. It becomes, you know, uh, greater when we come together in worship. So what's happening? It can increase. So the experience of the presence of God for me can be greater than the experience of the presence of God for another person. Because maybe I'm spending time with the Lord, spending time in the word of God. So when I go to church, I'm just giving an example, and I start worshiping the Lord. I just start experiencing him powerfully in a few minutes. Whereas for another person, it might take, you know, two songs, three songs before they actually say, hey, I can sense God's presence. So you see, there are measures of the presence. And each of us can experience it, you know, depending on where we are at in our preparation you know, of the experience of the presence. So there can be greater and greater. So sometimes do you, you you can, I'm sure you have experienced it. You just go to a particular service and, you know, you just sense the presence so powerfully. You're like, wow, you know, I can, God's presence is so powerful here. You know, we say things like that. So obviously there is a greater measure than the omnipresence of God. God is present everywhere, but it's not the same as how you experienced him when you felt his presence so powerfully, okay? So it's really up to us how we pursue the presence of God. We can have incredible measures of the presence of God, you know, through all these things, prayer, worship, word, surrender, consecration, faith, right? We use all the other keys to come to that place Obedience was all the other keys to come to a place where we experience the presence of God. So why do we want the presence of God? Okay, that's the next question. You know, when there is a greater presence of God, we will see God's power manifest. So that is our interest. Okay, so as it is, God's presence is powerful. Why? Like Psalm 97 verse 5, it says, uh, uh, you know, the, the mountains melt like wax in the presence of the Lord. What are these mountains? We could say uh, <clears throat> that, you know, we understand uh, maybe there are circumstances, there are challenges, there are demonic oppositions, there are, you know, so many things that come against the, the believer. In the presence of God, what does Psalm 97 verse 5 say? Mountains will melt like wax. So there is a power which the presence carries, isn't it? So that is why we want the presence. If there is no presence, we cannot see you know, the, the, the working of the power of God in our midst. So when we see the presence increasing, you, know, you and I will begin to notice that Great things start happening. So the presence of God may not necessarily, remember we said anointing, uh, it is the flow of the power of God through an individual. And that is why we said we have to be good conduits or, you know, we have to carry the anointing well 
in our lives now as far as the presence is concerned you know even when nothing is done people can still experience god's power for example you know let's say nobody is singing or nobody is preaching or nobody is saying a word okay those are all release of the anointing but in the presence when god's presence rests upon his people you know in first corinthians 5 4 we read you know where the where the lord is present his power is present that that scripture says so where god is present his power will be there so without any other gifting or uh, you know uh, expression you might find that automatically people are getting touched in different ways we said god works out of the box so you know you might have testimonies where people say hey i was just standing there and i got healed i was just i just entered and i felt joy i so what's happening the presence of god carries the power of god and which is why we want it we want it for the supernatural to work in people's lives okay so let's look for the increase of the presence of god you know when we talk about the increase of the presence of god one analogy is uh just take butter okay take butter put it on a pan just keep it on a cold pan would it ever melt it won't how about you know, light the light the gas or you know switch on your your electric stove and then watch the the slab of butter what happens the temperature is increasing a little bit first so you see a little bit of the butter melting you increase the temperature some more right so what's happening as the temperature increases you would notice that the butter is beginning to melt you know uh, fully okay and at some point it's it's all liquid it's completely melted so the presence of god when it increases in our midst it's somewhat like that you and i can have varying we can function in any level of the presence any degree of the presence but we should always desire a greater extent of the presence because powerful things happen in the presence of god so uh, you know we must desire it and, and testimonies will come out of it you know how god can touch lives he can touch even physical bodies i've heard uh, and i think i shared one of those uh, testimonies with you where you know somebody just felt in a worship session that uh, coffee was poured on them and their neck you know neck or back got healed when nobody did anything so what happened basically the group there was hosting the presence of god and people were getting healed in the presence of god so you and i you know in our churches we must desire and say lord when we come together let your presence be strong because when there is the presence according to 1 corinthians 5 4 there is the power so power will be there when god's presence is there so expressions of the presence of god you know there is a, a apc publication which i encourage all of us to read it's called as the presence of god uh, in that uh, publication you would see that in the uh, you know uh, like you know there are many incidents in scripture where the presence of god manifested like rain or the presence of god manifested like fire the presence of god manifested as light okay so can there be a, a a noticeable manifestation of the presence of god in our midst today yes there can be so as i said physically there can be sensations right similarly uh, we might be able to so when you read about the revivals the azusa street revival and you read about uh, you know the pandita ramabai mukti mission in both of these revivals people say that when the the believers were gathered in prayer they saw fire literally they saw physical fire 
whereas it was not a physical fire. In fact, uh, uh, you know, there is one report which says that they tried pouring fire, the water on the fire, but it could not be, uh, you know, uh, contained because it was not a physical fire. The presence of God can reveal itself in these forms. So that's all. So it's just uh, a tangible expression of the presence of God. So even Azusa Street uh, stories go like, uh, you know, fire engines were called because the building was on fire, but it was not little fire. It was the presence of God on them or a light. So even today, these things can happen. You no know, rain. I've heard of testimonies where people started praying and it started raining. OK, and in that rain, people were baptized in the Holy Spirit. So. These things happen, wind, a powerful wind or light. Physically, can these things take place? Yes, they can take place. So, uh, and, you know, why do we want the presence of God? I've been saying God's power is present. Now, if you look at Psalm 132, verses 13 through 18, even that is a passage from the Old Testament where God speaks about Zion. Zion is God's people or, uh, you know, God's chosen people. Today, we know that we are the spiritual Zion. Hebrews, the book of Hebrews talks about it. We, the believers, are the spiritual Zion where God chooses to make his dwelling. So his dwelling place is in our midst. So when you read Psalm 132, you will see God says in, in that place or in Zion, there are many blessings. I will bless her. I will you know, give provision. I will, there are, you know, all those I will, I will, I, I will provide bread. So many things are there. I will clothe her with salvation. So God's blessings will be there where he dwells. And where he dwells is the presence of God. So why are we going after the presence of God? God, we want your presence in our meetings. We want your presence in our church, Lord. We want your presence in our home. We want your presence, you know, in our uh, services. Because of this, Psalm 132, where the presence of God is, salvation will be there. Provision will be there. Blessing will be there. Deliverance will be there. These are all the promises of God. And, you know, as we've already seen, 1 Corinthians 5, 4, uh, that, you know, God's Power will be there. So we can see the supernatural works of God. So what do we do about the presence of God? Here's the important point. Recognize it. Recognize it. Okay. And live in such a way that the presence increases. Okay. And a good way to understand this is, you know, if we had a guest come to our house, they walk in to our home, we say hello, and then we just go, we start doing our own thing. So maybe we are busy with the computer or with our phone. How would the guests like it? Would they ever come back again? They may not like it, isn't it? So in the same way, when God's presence comes, we have to look at ways to continue hosting it. We will do that when we acknowledge the presence, you know, and when we uh, look for ways to be a better host. Okay, so when the guest comes, we make it more comfortable for them. We say, hey, you know, sit here. Can I get you something? To... So in the same way, as far as God's presence is concerned, we should not get busy with our own agendas. But we say, Lord, we will spend time in prayer. We will spend time in worship. We will spend time in the Word. Because what am I doing? I am entertaining the presence of God more in my life. Okay, and so then what happens? It increases. He comes in a stronger and a stronger and a more powerful way over my life or over my ministry. Or, you know, if you want to consider a community, why is it that in some churches you experience such a mighty presence? Because all of them are hosting the presence of God. Whereas in some communities, maybe they're just learning about the presence and the glory of God. So we want not just the presence, but we want the glory powerful manifestation of the presence of God where things happen, right? So respond to it, recognize it, respond to it, and we will see it growing personally, corporately. When we start doing that, you know, uh, we will experience the glory of God. 
So what is the glory of God? Again, the glory of God, yes, it's a powerful expression of his presence, but it is also an expression of the very nature of God. Okay, so what is the nature of God? You know, God's goodness. So in the glory of God, what happens? You know, when you read about all these revivals, what happened? People got healed. People's marriages were restored. People's, uh, you know, lives were transformed. Where does all this come from? From God's goodness. So the glory of God is the revelation of the nature of God. So we see that in the glory, we will see who God really is. He is a good God. He is a healer. He is a deliverer. No, he is a provider. He is a father. He is a protector. He is the lifter of us. So you can just go on and on and on. So the glory of God will be the powerful expression of the very nature of God, which is why you know, we always cry out to God and say, God, we want your glory. Now, there are uh, incidents where you know we say, hey, you know, there was gold dust and there was feathers falling on people. It's not bad. It's not bad. But you know what? The glory is not just that. Those are all some remnants, I would say. I mean, I'm just using that word. I don't think anybody else is. Just some small little things, you know, that were part of the glory. But the actual glory is who God is, what he does. So he shows himself as a deliverer. He shows himself, you know, as the man of wisdom where solutions come for problems. Many things happen where God reveals his nature, right? So that is what is important and that is what we are looking for. So the glory, what is glory? Glory is, we always say, who God is and what he does. Okay? So glory of God is who God is and what he does. So in his powerful presence, we can see who God is. And that is why we desire his presence. So in the glory, when he's expressing himself powerfully, he moves sovereignly. You know, maybe people are, that's what you see in the revivals. You know, the layman's revival is a beautiful uh, example where um, you know, people started gathering during a lunchtime. And, uh, you know, it started with some six people, then 20 people, 40 people. It just increased over a period of weeks. There were uh, 3,000, 10,000 people gathering uh, for prayer. And you see that in those moments, even unbelievers walked into the prayer meeting. They did not know about the gospel, nothing. But it seems in such a presence of God, people automatically started getting up and saying, I must get saved. You know, it's like a sovereign work of God. How did they come to know? You know, what happened to them sovereignly, even before they could have, you know, a, a, an entire mindset. God was working in their hearts and their lives. So miracles take place sovereignly. You know, maybe there were people who did not even have faith for a miracle of uh, God's provision, but it happened. So in the glory of God, God works sovereignly. Sometimes even without faith, things happen. Okay, so which is why we are saying, God, we want your presence. Not just your presence, we want your glory so that your nature is revealed powerfully. Okay, and so many things happen in the glory of God. When God simply speaks and things manifest, you know, where God does and we receive. So we must pray and say, God, give us encounters of your glory. Give people encounters of your glory. You remember Paul on the road to Damascus? He sees this huge light hit him, right? What happened? The glory of God encountered Saul at that time on the road to Damascus and it transformed his life. So even today, you and I can pray, you can say, God, give us all the expressions of your presence. Let it increase. Let the temperature increase. Let us see the glory. And in the glory, God can work sovereignly. You know? And uh, I think the revivals are a good uh, uh, example for us to look back at and see 
the powerful things that have taken place under the glory of God. So we stop right here. Uh, just maybe a minute. If there are any questions or thoughts, we can uh, we can address it and pray and close for today. Yes, yes, it can do. Go ahead. Father, we come to the throne of grace. Lord, thank you for this day as you have given us, Lord. Lord, whatever we have learned from your word, O oh Lord, it should not be wasted, but it should be used for the implementation and your kingdom expansion, Lord. Lord, we thank you for Pastor Nancy, Lord, whatever he has taught us, Lord. Lord, it should be used for for our kingdom expansion lord we thank you for apc bible college like whatever whatever the opportunity which we are getting here lord we thank you for each and everything and all the students who have been learning here lord bless them god has protect them provide them lord in jesus name we ask everything and god's people say amen amen, amen. thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you thank you brother isaac god bless you thank you everyone god bless all the best for your uh your assignments do well and uh, i'll see you next week bye for now fast nancy